Hi everybody, good to be back. This is uh, part three of the Epps syndrome. Do you remember we started about two, three weeks, uh, two weeks ago, sorry. The Epps syndrome, we're doing the part uh, three, as I just said, and we're gonna put, put a couple of segments in and see what apps are we gonna use to improve our relationship with the uh, Lord Jesus Christ. And you know that we've, we've done <clears throat> quite a few and then already, let me let me just um, fire you guys up again with the uh, with what we where we got the name from the app, app syndrome, and you would know that everything today is an app. We use an app for everything. We you download apps continually on your on your on your, on your phone, and so if an app is an application, so to me, and then the Lord spoke to me. He said, you know, Pete, uh, do something. What do you my life? Where where are my apps? Where are the things that that you guys need to do? And apply in 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 your lives towards me. So I <clears throat> was um, twenty joined to, to to God in His thoughts there, and I, I said to myself, "But hang on, we, let's let's do something about this." And I and I looked at it. And I said, "Application. What application? And application for a connected Christian life is the is the whole thing that that sort of this whole thing came about. And and more than that, is I went and if you go and look at the word syndrome, you'll find that there's part of a, a Part of the, the descriptions to syndrome is that it's a, a characteristic combination of opinion, emotion, and behavior. So, obviously, that if we apply these, these 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 applications and apps that we're speaking about as the at syndrome, then we will see that in our in our walk with with with, with Jesus and in our in our relationship with God, we find that our, our opinions. And, and we'll, we'll be different because God's speaking us to it in, a, in a godly way. So we'll have godly opinions and godly emotions and godly behavior. That's sort of what we want to do because that's how we want to apply these apps into our life. And let's look at it. And it's the background again. It comes from, from, from the book of James. And as James, um, in the first chapter, in the 22nd to the 25th verse, he says this to us. He says, don't just listen to God's word. In other words, the Bible. Just do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. If you if you aren't doing what the Bible says, he says for you and if if you listen to the word and you don't obey it, it's like glancing, checking yourself in the mirror, turning around, walking away, and you forget actually what you look like. Um, is that, nothing went in up here. So, and the, and it's exactly what he's saying to us about the word. He says don't don't do that. He says don't just listen to God's word. Apply. God's word, in other words, is what he's saying. He says we need to apply, and that's, the application is there so that we, when we apply that, we become perfect in every way, because th that's what the word is there. The, the word is to make us perfect in God's eyes. And we see what Jesus also said. He said that if we love him, now I'm, I'm sure that most of us love Jesus. So if um, if you love me, to Jesus, you do obey my commands, and his commands are the apps. His, are, his commands are the applications that we all need to apply in our life. We went through a few already, and, <clears throat> and I just want to maybe just ask you, maybe just, just get the first part and the second part, and then, then you've caught up, and then you're with us already. And I don't want to go through all those again. I just wanted to go through exactly where we are, where we got this thing, where we got this from, this idea from. And then it was also good for me just to explain to, to you that this verse is so important for us, the verse in James 1. So, having known that, um, we know that what we have done up until now, <clears throat> there are quite a few. We've done, um, my memory serves me correctly, I think we've done seven already up until now. So, we're going to get into into the others um, today and this morning and or on this day that we are in. And I, I need to ask you this morning um, on, on, on this day, where, where are you? In your life, in your relationship with Christ, because here's the first thing I wanna, I wanna, I wanna just share with you this morning. There's a verse in the Bible, in Matthew seven, verse six, and it says this: It says, "Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy." Wow. He says, "Don't throw your pearls to pigs; they will trample the pearls, and then they'll turn and they'll attack you." Now, if you can look at the at the at the, at the Greek at, at the Greek translation of the Bible, you'll see it where, where it says. I've just used the NLT, the New Living Translation. Yeah, and they say, don't, don't waste what is holy. It says, there they use the word, the, the, the Greek translation is dogs. We talk, they speak about dogs. That's important for us to understand that and why, why Jesus is using this analogy. Because if you look at it, you'll see that if you, or between, between dogs and pigs, and what he actually means here, 
and, 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 and he says, he says, give that, that, he says, give that <clears throat> which is holy to the dogs and see what happens. Now, let me, let me just tell you, because you see a dog was, was, was seen as a very, wasn't seen as a clean animal at the time. Now, if you go, you've got to go right back into the book of Deuteronomy, and I'm not going to go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Um, I'm not going to go there right now. So, so, so the deal is this, if you want in your old time, go and read it and you'll see it's all got to do with the old stuff. And so, so what happens is that when, 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 when meat was prepared for, for offering at the time, then what would happen is dogs would come and they would, they would grab the meat and, then, and rip a piece out of the carcass and then run away with it. And so they didn't see that, you see, and then, and that's where this thing got, this, this, this comes from. And maybe we just need to just read that, that verse again or just have a look at that verse again. And you'll see what I'm talking about this, this, this today. And, and you'll see that it says, don't waste your what is unholy on people that are unholy. So in other words, you can't give stuff that is already cleansed, which is sacred, which is clean in front of God. You don't give that to somebody that is unclean, that doesn't really appreciate what's coming their way okay so, so we go further and he says don't throw your pulls before pigs and i'm going to get into that right now and see what what happens there you see pigs <laughs> pigs are are, are, are are rough have you seen have you seen pigs in, in, in a pig sty they're rough eh? i mean if you just if you come close to them they just it doesn't matter what's under their feet they just they just they just come all the time and, and, and the, the, the quicker they come what happens they 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 just want whatever you got. They, that's what they want. So what under, what's under their feet is absolutely gone. And that's why the, the word says this. He says they, they tramp. If you've got, if you got like pearls, pearls in, 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 in the, um, <clears throat> you go and read it. It's, it's, it's a, the pearls before swine. We, we know that so well. So, so they tramp on the pearls. They tramp on the precious stuff. Pearls are precious, man. They, they, this, the stuff that comes from in a, in, inside a, an oyster. These, these things come out, and they, and these, they, they genuine cool things, and they, and, and, and they, they, they very, very expensive. So, don't waste what is unholy on which, which is holy on unholy, and don't take the stuff that is very important and dear to you, and let it be tramped. That's, that's so important that we understand what he says. He says, don't waste this stuff. Don't throw the good stuff and let it be tramped and let it be chowed. And what, what are we talking about? Let's, let's have a look what we're talking about. You see, if, we, <clears throat> if God has touched your life and, and he's done something for you, and he's taken you from a place where you were to a place where you are now. He's picked you up out of the mire. He's taken you to a place of, of elevation. Would you, would you still want to hang out with unholy? Would you still want to hang out with somebody that will jump all over you? And your, your worth before God is, is so cool. And that person will come and just, just stomp on you all the time making you unworthy of, of how you feel before God. If you ask, they take away that, that genuineness that God has given you. It gets ripped away from you. Don't waste your time there. Get out of that place. But apply it. Apply the words of Jesus Christ when he said, don't, don't cast your pearl before swine. And don't let the dogs take it away. Don't let them eat you. Don't, don't let that uncleanliness of life. Don't. And don't get into a place when you that, that Jesus has to make the statement about you and I. It's a warning that He gives us. He says, "This is a this is an application. It's not just a statement." He says, "I want you to I want you to go and I want you to use this, my friend. I'm going to ask you from the bottom of my heart this morning. Don't let trim people trample all over you." If you've got a beautiful relationship with Jesus, or maybe you're saying, Peter, I don't have that yet. I'm saying to you, because people are jumping on you, people are hoying you down, people are tramping you into the mud, people don't want you to get up. I'm asking you, let God listen to His voice through His Son, Jesus Christ, through, through that Bible, that book you've got, which is so much dust is gathered on that. Pick it up. Take it. Read it. Get somebody to talk to you. And you see this, this worthy person that you are, this beautiful person 
that you are. This holy person that you can become will never again be, be thrown before the unworthiness of life. Don't let <clears throat> the goodness end up in the mud. Don't let the goodness be trampled and be eaten by that which is unholy. Don't let that happen to you. Because your worth, your self-worth, your worth that God has given you needs to be looked after. And he wants to do that for you. And that's why he sent his son Jesus Christ to say to you, don't, don't walk around with that. And don't let that happen to you. <clears throat> don't cast your pearl before swine. Don't. Because you know what's going to happen? It will get trampled on. Pigs, man, they just hoy, they, they just... They stomp, they stomp in down here and they're looking over here what they want to eat. What, 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 what else is there to eat? That's what it is. And that's what it is. You have, you have these busy pigs in life that come and they do, all they do is they, they rush towards you. And your self-worth is Jesus. They don't see that, man. They, 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 they don't worry about whether you serve God or not. They just want to, whatever you've got, they want to devour and take that away from you. And sometimes it's a lot of other stuff that's in us as well that God has given us and it's there. And they come and they just remove that from you. They rip that from you. They take that which is holy and they rip pieces of, honor, of holiness out of you. That's what they do. So what he says, don't let that happen to you. Friend, I just want to do this one today, just, just now, and then we'll do, we'll do the others. Just catch them as they come along. But this one has taken a bit more time than what I thought. But this is the deal. This is what I'm asking you so, 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 so nicely this morning. Let us just read that again. Let us listen to what the Word of God says to you and me this morning. Can I read that again to you slowly so that you would understand what we're talking about? He says, don't waste what is holy. You are a holy friend. You are a holy person. If you've got a relationship with Christ, you are holy. He says, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't mix with those dudes, man. Get out of that thing. They're going to take, they're going to steal your self-worth from you. And don't throw your pearls before pigs, man. Don't. Those are the, your, your, those, all those things that is worth so much to, you, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let the pigs of this world trample over those things. They will come. They will bring you to a place. You see, that which is sacred will be taken away. The world will swallow it up. People don't care about you. People just want something from you. Hang out with people that serve Christ. Hang out with people that think the same as you do. Hang out with people that want to be changed. Hang out with people that don't want to, they don't want to rip pieces out. They want pieces healed in their body. Those are the folk that we need to hang out with. Let's apply that into our life. Let's put that into our life. Let's make that as, as, as new as an application so that we become this person of, of, of genuineness, the behavioral stuff, that everything changes. My obedience changes. My, the way I think changes. Everything else within me changes because of the holiness of Christ in me. Catch you again later as we catch up on this thing. It was good visiting with you today. In Jesus' name, you are so special. Just remember that. Look at yourself and say, hey, this is me, man. Nothing more is going to happen to you. I'm going to make this thing happen. Catch you later. Bye-bye.